What a ballpark. Hello, everyone. I'm Jan Hutchins. Welcome to Yankee Stadium and another edition of the HBO Sports Dynasty series. When you talk about dynasties, you almost have to start right here. It boggles the mind to think of how the New York Yankees have dominated baseball for the past 60 years. 32 pennants, 22 World's Championships. That's nearly double the number of pennants any other team has won, almost triple the number of World Championships. There's almost as much history in this single ballpark as there is at Cooperstown. And the names of the men who made that history still keep it alive. Gehrig played over there. Dickey and Barra behind the plate. Rizzuto at shortstop. And out in center field, fellows named Mantle and DiMaggio. Reggie Jackson is the right fielder these days for the Yankees. But that domain once belonged to perhaps the greatest of them all, Babe Ruth. And that's where the dynasty started. Because before the Babe came here from Boston, the Yankees, or Highlanders as they were once known, were just another ball club no stadium and pennants to boast of. But then Colonel Jacob Rupert and the Bambino changed all that. George Herman Ruth, as a left-handed pitcher with the Boston Red Sox, was the best of his day. But soon the Babe cared more for hitting, and the Yankees purchased him for his bat. The Yankees also picked up other players from Boston, like Hall of Fame pitcher Wade Hoyt. Well, of course, first of all, Harry Frazee, who was one of the greatest uh, theatrical producers of his day, needed money. And consequently, he was staging a lot of New York shows, and <clears throat> he, I don't know what the deal was, but he sold Ruth, of course, uh, that is, he sold Ruth to the Yankees for $125,000. By pillaging the talent-rich Red Sox, Jacob Rupert got himself not only a pennant winner, but in Babe Ruth, the game's newest and greatest gate attraction. The combination made it possible for him to build Yankee Stadium, which opened before a record crowd on April 18, 1923. Stadium was just like entering heaven compared to the polo grounds and the other ball fields around the league, you see. And the, uh, oh, it had its own uh, training room with sauna baths and and reception rooms, and Rupert, Rupert really went to town when he, when he built that stadium. The infield was just as smooth and velvety and green, and oh, it was a picture, I tell you, there was nothing like it. Just like a golf green. That was, that was quite a ballpark, believe me. That was, that was the creme de la creme of a ballpark. With the Bay blasting home runs at a rate no one imagined possible, the New Yorkers won pennants in 1921, 22, and 23 but then finished seventh in 25, the year of Ruth's operation and notorious suspension. But 1925 was also the year a local boy named Lou Gehrig made the lineup. 1926 brought another pennant, but in 1927 the team exploded. Not even Mayor Fiorello LaGuardia could upstage a team with the league's best pitching and most awesome lineup. Murderers Row. The 1927 Yankees hit 307 and won 110 games. Honestly, I do not know whether the Yankees were the greatest team that ever played. I, I like to think so, but they were quite a ball club, and I must say this about them. They very seldom, if ever, beat themselves. We used to have what they call five o'clock lightning because we used to win a lot of games in, in the eighth and ninth inning. We seemed to be able to do what we wanted to do when we wanted to do it. And I don't think we were ever pressed. We were in first place the first day of the season and we're never out of first place at any time during the season. The 1927 Yankees of Miller Huggins won the pennant by 19 games and then swept Pittsburgh in the World Series. It might have been a touch dull had not Babe Ruth met the first serious challenge to his home run sovereignty from Lou Gehrig, a teammate. And the spotlight they shared probably did more to promote baseball than anything that ever happened in the game. Day by day, Gehrig was keeping pace with the Babe in a breathtaking home run derby. By August 15th, Gehrig led 38 to 36, but in the last 42 games, Ruth clobbered 24 to Gehrig's nine, including seven in the last nine games for a record number 60. When you figure Gehrig that year knocking in 175 runs, 175 runs, but get this, 
He knocked in 175 runs, half, batting half to Babe, who hit 60 home runs, meaning that Babe cleaned the bases 60 times, and Gary followed him in with virtually 60 times with nobody on base. You ask me whom I believe was the greatest baseball player that I've ever seen. Well, I would say Babe Ruth, because I believe him to be not only the gate, greatest gate attraction, the greatest personality, but the greatest baseball player that I have ever seen. The house that Ruth built saw seven pennants and four World Series triumphs during the 15 years he wore the pinstripes here. Peaking in the 1927-28 years with back-to-back -back World Series sweeps. Yet for all the glory of that era, still greater dominance lay ahead. Joe McCarthy was named to manage the club after the 1930 season. McCarthy faced formidable opposition from the Philadelphia A's all during the 30s. In 1932, the Yankees won the series, then finished second for three consecutive years before beginning to streak in 1936. By then, Babe Ruth was no longer wearing the pinstripes, but a graceful rookie center fielder from San Francisco was.